Hello and welcome back to part 3 of the Critical Rocket MacWarrior Online tutorial. This is the meat of it, really. This is in-game. Uh, currently running in the testing grounds. This is pretty much how you'll start uh, with the default options. You'll be in third person. As you can see here, the camera will be uh, located just a little behind your Mac. And you'll be aiming with your arms locked to torso. What I mean by that is the reticle you see in the middle, uh, the cross one is all the weapons that are in the torso. The circle one represents weapons uh, in your arms. So in the bottom right of the screen you can see on my Mac is uh, the only weapon in the circle is the medium pulse laser while everything else is in the torso which is in the reticle below. So one of the first things you'll probably want to do is uh, if you haven't already done them you can set your weapon groups. As you see here I can use the arrow keys on your keyboard uh, up, down, left and right and that'll pick it. So let's say I want the medium pulse laser to be in weapon group 2. So we would uh, move across and press right control and let's say we want the SRM2 in the same group. Now that means they're both firing in the same group so to turn off the first group we just press right control on that and as you see the colour uh, goes off. Uh, we have our Ultra AC5 which we'll keep in group 1 and our LRM5 so let's put that in group 3. So the keys I currently use is fire, weapon group 1 is left mouse button, weapon group 2 is right mouse button, and weapon group 3 is uh, the E key. But you can set these up however you want in the settings under controls. Um, but if you want to get out of third person view, to rather play it third person, you just press F4, and then you're in cockpit. When you're in cockpit view, you get the radar map, which you can see at the bottom. Uh, you can see any targets, which are represented by red triangles. If you press R, acquired. you lock onto them. Uh, when you have missiles, like LRMs or streaks, you'll see that the two uh, circles will lock. If I go back over, you'll see. When you hear the tone, that's it, you're locked. Uh, but basic movement inside a mech. As you can see, the circle moves around on its own as I drag the mouse about. This is. Uh, when you have the arm lock uh, deactivated. Basically that means I can actually aim slightly ahead of my reticle because it's my arm turning. So when I'm moving around and I'm looking at a target I can aim to the extreme left or to the extreme right and if I press the right mouse button it'll fire the SRM but you can see the laser fires where the circle is but the SRM fired straight ahead. So that could take a little getting used to and you may want to keep it locked to the torso at first just so when you get used to the weapons. Now, uh, you have several bars at the bottom, you have um, next to the uh, map you've got there on the right, you've got your heat, which if I fire the weapon you can see it going up, if I fire those you see it goes up to about 8% and then down. That's your heat level. If the gauge reaches maximum your mech will shut down and you'll have to wait for a few seconds while the heat dissipates and then your mech will automatically power back up. You can shut down your mech on its own by pressing P, default. System offline. And in that state, uh, the camera will just rotate your head so you can look around inside your cockpit. And you press P again, and you'll power back up. Um, the far left one is your speed. Default, you'll have throttle decay on, which means you'll have to keep down uh, the W or S key by default uh, to maintain your speed. But uh, you can turn that off, and then you can just regulate the speed yourself. And to turn left and right, you just use the A and D keys. If you're using a mouse and keyboard, of course, if you joystick, you may have calibrated it yourself uh, when turning it left and right. Uh, but uh, I think a majority of players are using keyboard, so uh, the WASD keys will handle most of that. If you want to decelerate, you just hold S. Um, you can quickly come to a complete stop by default pressing X, which will just take your speed down to zero. And if you want to walk backwards, uh, it's just the same as W, just hold down S until you reach max speed. Obviously, you walk backwards slower than you run forwards. But it's a good way of um, keeping your front armor to a target while uh, backing up. Now the third bar in the middle there, you'll see on the left between the throttle and the map, will be jump jets. Uh, if your mech has them equipped, that's what you'll see is the solid orange bar. Now when I activate jump jets, you'll see the bar decrease. So, here we go. Your mech will have a slight lift, uh, depending on the weight class. Light mechs will... Artillery uh, strike online. <laughs> and your artillery will get ready. Light mechs will uh, jump much higher than mediums and heavies and assaults. And not every mech has these equipped though, so uh, it's not really consideration for all mechs, but those that do have it, 
you have to keep uh, take into account that the different uh, weight classes will actually be affected uh, by the number of jump jets they have and their weight actually affects how high they can jump. Now this Shadow Hawk is a medium mech so it has okay jump distance and height so this is what it looks like in game. So you have to be aware that jumping is all well and good, but if you jump too high uh, without uh, sort of leveling off your descent uh, using some of your remaining jump jet fuel, you will damage your legs. Uh, let's see if I can uh, show you this. So if we just wait for our bar to fill and do a full burn. As you can see there, the paper doll in the bottom left that says Shadow Hooks, uh, represents my mech, has now taken very light damage to its armor and both legs. Light mechs uh, can fall uh, from a higher, uh, well, a greater height and take less damage or no damage at all, and the heavier you get, the potentially more damage you can take as you go. Uh, on the point of the paper doll on the left, as you can see it's broken into different segments. You have the two arms, uh, two legs, the centre torso, which is the uh, larger of the mass in the middle, the one directly above that is the head, and then you have the left and right torso, so you could look at them as being a left and right shoulder. Uh, hitting these areas uh, will obviously wear down the armour and eventually expose the internals. Now, uh, if I target this spider here, when I have a lock, in the top right of the screen you'll see your target. Now you see the name and the weapons it currently has equipped. You can zoom in by pressing middle mouse button, default key. And so if I walk over to this, let's uh, let's shoot his right leg. As you can see, flashes. Now the colours will represent the amount of armour damage. Now my legs are in yellow, which is light, orange is uh, moderate damage, and if I shoot again, his leg is now red, and then if I shoot one more time, I've now blown off all of the armour in that leg and uh, you get a visual representation, you get a lot of smoke uh, pouring out of the section. So if we shoot that and the same colours apply and now his reg is, uh, leg is red, reg is red, and now we shoot and we have blown the leg off. Well we've destroyed the leg, we haven't actually cleanly blown it off as you can see the mech is still standing but it means his uh, speed is severely reduced, he won't be running anywhere, he can just limp. Um, but if you blow the other leg off, the mech is out of action. So a uh, common tactic against larger mechs, or fast mechs like this little spider here, is to aim for the legs. And uh, light mechs don't have much armor. As you can see, this Ultra AC-5 can do quite a lot of damage very quickly. And then we shoot a couple more times. And there we go. You get some nice ragdoll effects. So that mech is dead. Target acquired. Now if we target this other mech. Now, when I'm locked on with LRMs, I just press... Uh, whatever fire key you have assigned. The default is number 3, I have it set to E. And we can see that they do a spread of damage. Missiles will hit random locations on the mech depending on their facing and your direction. And, uh, it takes numerous uh, facts into account, but they're a good harassment weapon at long range. Uh, so if we, for instance, aim just for his arm. Eventually blow this off. There we go. And you see his leg has, uh, sorry, his arm has popped off completely. And it's rather cool, you see the little, uh, little bundles of myoma and cabling sticking out there. And he's now lost some of his weapons. Um, you can also blow off the left and right shoulders. So we work through this. As you can see, the armor on the actual body is way better than the arms and legs. Obviously, if I take off a shoulder, he loses the arm as well, so there's a benefit in aiming for that. And you can see that the damage uh, pattern is quite cool. It's like all the big holes in the armor and the such, and the smoke billowing out. Headshots are obviously very hard to get. I mean, even aiming at the head there, I haven't hit. I've hit the torso. And sometimes you just have to kind of look around, try and... There we go, I hit the head then. So it shows you how hard it can be and sometimes how close you have to be. Now if I shoot a mech in the back, uh, this is where they have the least amount of armour. So for instance, two shots and I've almost blown off his armour in the rear and now I've called him. That's uh, a common term. 
how from here is a lot easier to kill. A lot quicker to die. There we go. So there's a tactical reason that you want to get behind target your target acquired. and uh, kill them quickly. Uh, that way, especially uh, more dangerous foes like uh, atlases, banshees, dire walls, those kind of equipment. Uh, now you heard earlier that my artillery strike is ready, and I was talking about these earlier. So if to use these, uh, it's based on your reticle in the center. You look at the area you want the artillery to come in. Artillery strike. You press activated. the button. You back. Get a bit of range. You'll see the red smoke and. Uh, unfortunately, it's not showing the effects, but you saw he took quite a lot of damage there from the artillery uh, that reined in. Uh, you've probably seen artillery on previous videos on the channel, uh, but yeah, uh, they're a one-shot deal in each match. They cost about 40,000 C bills each, and you can only bring either one artillery or one airstrike per round. But they can turn the tide, they can keep people trapped in a certain part of the map, and you, know, you can even get a good kill with them. Uh, so, I think I've covered everything there, uh, regarding some of the basics, uh, jump jets and the such. Obviously movement is handled by the mouse by default, but as I said you can use uh, joystick or gamepad if, uh, if need be. I know, I definitely know you can use a joystick outside of keyboard and mouse if you're more comfortable with that. Uh, zooming. Uh, one of the other features is, um, only available in first person, is when you press B, default key, you get the battle grid. Now, from the battle grid, you'll be able to see over here all the other players on your team, broken into lances of four mechs each, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Uh, on this map, you'll be able to zoom in. Uh, you can pan around holding the right mouse button. You can uh, sort of uh, see the grid references, which are useful for telling your team when you spotted a target in a certain sector. Uh, by pressing I, uh, normally you can see the names of the other pilots that would be in the match with you. Uh, you can zoom in and out as you can see. Uh, you get a good topographical uh, view. Uh, these buttons take company command, lance command and resign command. If you take company command you essentially become uh, the commander of your team for the battle and you can put these icons on uh, on the map for different uh, for your uh, friendlies. Taking lance command uh, gives you a, a similar uh, set up, uh, your, but your command uh, icons will be green instead of yellow, so you'll be able to guide your lance uh, in and around the field like that. It can be useful uh, in competitive matches and the such, or uh, just when you need to highlight a threat uh, to your allied players. Uh, I don't know, no, the chat keys don't work in here, but you'll have um, T will be all chat, Y will be team chat, and U will be lance chat. Lance chat is just to the people in whatever lance you're in, so if you're in alpha lance, it'll go to the other three players in that lance with you. Um, as an option in uh, the settings, uh, the all chat, I believe, is off by default now, so you have to uncheck that if you want to speak to the players on the other team. Uh, text chat from the, players, uh, from the opposing players will be red, uh, friendly chat will be blue. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. The next part coming up will be dealing with Innisfear weapons specifically, so stick around for that everyone, and thanks for watching, and have a good day.